join me. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Cub Scout Sword. Please join me in the Scout Oath. Signs up. Oh my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God as I come to and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Please join me in the scout, scout law. Sign, signs up. On my no. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, and helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and ready. So we want to welcome everybody um, to again to our advancement ceremony. My name is Andrea Sessoms. I'm the Cub Master for PAC 49. Um, as we go through, I hope everybody, did everybody get a program? If not, we can get some kids to pass them out. Um, we're going to start with a Friends of Scouting presentation, um, and Ted Lord is going to do that for us. Thank you. That's better. Or louder, anyway. I don't know if it's better. Um, so, when you're dealing with Andrea and all the, all the boys you have here, of course, you've got the, the cost of Cub Scouting, and I'm sure there are dues and, and fees that you pay to go camping and those kinds of things. But how many of y'all have been to Camp Charles? I know you did uh, Cub Family Day Camp, so y'all been to Camp Charles, a lot of y'all? How many have been down to uh, Camp Body? Did y'all go to Pamlico Sea Base? Did y have y'all done that or Camp Body? Well, Camp Charles is a good example of one of the things that the district provides. There's several camps throughout the Tar River District, and the council provides all the costs associated with those. That's the cost of maintenance, electricity, 
Uh, they've just bought a tractor that they're using to upgrade or to uh, improve the roads and do some of the mowing and those kinds of things. There's also all the costs, the administrative costs of scouting. This is none of the fun stuff, but it's you know, making sure that everybody's keeping track of the ranks and you've got your patches and all those sorts of things. And they've done the math and the total cost of scouting for, all, for a kid to go through the East Carolina Council is about $320 a year. And the, the uh, council does a lot of work to try to raise money through other efforts besides fundraising, including, as you know, uh, the popcorn sale. I'm sure everybody loves the popcorn sale. Uh, then they have the, um, the scout shop where they sell patches and those kinds of things. They make money through that. Uh, and they do fundraising, corporate fundraising. There was a dinner here recently to honor Billy Wooten, and that was uh, to raise money for the council. But they also try to raise money through this Friends of Scouting. So every time there's a get to be this time of year and there's a blue and gold event or a crossover event or a court of honor. I was just here on Wednesday night for, for a Troop 49. They ask us to come out and talk a little bit about the cost of scouting and the benefit of scouting. So you know some of the benefits. You see everything that your children get in terms of both the physical benefits of going to the camps, but also you know, the benefits of being part of scouting. You learn about leadership. That presentation that those guys just made to be able to stand up and speak in a microphone to a big group like this, that's something a lot of kids uh, wouldn't be able to do, and I think we can credit that to scouting. But the cost of scouting that's not covered through all those other fundraising and other opportunities that I mentioned is $145 a scout. That's just doing the math. It costs, um, there are about 7,600 7, scouts uh, in the East Carolina District or Council. They look at the total cost, divide that by 7,600. Total cost per scout is $322. The amount that's not covered by all the efforts that they raise, including the popcorn and so forth, is $145. So they've asked us to go out and try to raise as much money as we can through these kinds of events. They ask people to please donate, if they can, $145. In other words, the cost of putting a scout through um, the scouting program for a year. And if you are able to donate $145, Today we have this patch. This is a series that's been um, going on for the last few years of historic sites in eastern North Carolina. To this year it's Somerset Plantation. If $145 is not something that you're able to do, really anything that you can give in support of scouting would be valuable to the council and to the district. To show your support and your appreciation for what Andrea and the other leaders in the area are doing and also your support of the scouting program in general. So these helpful young folks have handed out cards and pens uh, to you all in the audience as you're watching the presentations and the, the, uh, the uh, skits I believe you're going to have today and so forth. If you can take a minute to fill those out and I'll be waiting in the back at the end. Is that convenient? So I'll be waiting at the back at the end of the, of the uh, meeting tonight and if you wouldn't mind giving me the pens back and if you're able to make a donation, uh, we'd be very appreciative of that. Thank you very much for considering the request. All right. Oops. Okay. So, to get started with our entertainment portion of tonight, um, we are going to start with the skits. So, will the bear den come up? But is it time for the apple chart? Chief Lightfoot, is it time for your pucha? No, not time for your pucha. Chief Lightfoot, is it time for the pucha? Chief Lightfoot, is it time for your pucha? Chief Lightfoot, is it time for your pucha? Yes, it's time for your pucha.
Great job, guys. I've not seen that one before. That was really good. Okay, Lions, you're next. All two of you. <laughs> Sully, you're ready, aren't you? Wait, I was Hey, I'm for you, dummy. Uh, what do we do? Ring, ring. <laughs> Take two. Ring, ring. You don't say you don't. You don't say. You don't say. You don't say. You don't say. What was that all about? I don't know. He didn't say. <laughs> All right, we blow ones. Do you need the mic, Claudia? Come up here, y'all. Y'all don't have to worry. Okay, this is not a pretend type. It is pretend. Let me back that up. Nobody is really going to get hurt in this event. Let's hope. Um, but the Weeblo ones have been working, I'd say, the past couple of months on their first aid merit badge and part of the castaway piece, um, which is an elective now. And so they are going to actually, their skit is a hike, but it's more about um, what they would do if somebody got hurt while they were on a hike. So th they're going to actually show you some of the skills that they have learned. Okay, guys. Time out. Okay, James, can you move up here so they can see what's happening? <laughs> Hey, um, so, what, what's your, how old are you? Ten. Ten. <laughs> um. What do you like to eat? What do you like to eat? Hot dogs. <laughs> cool. So, what's your favorite movie? Uh. <laughs> I don't know. 
That's fine. So, uh, what's your favorite video game? Um, RBI Baseball. Interesting. Where were you born? North Carolina. Okay. Um, what part hurts? Everything. Understandable. <laughs> Hey guys, I need to fold out the sheet. Don't hang down. Hang tight, we're gonna help you. Hopefully. If you can't see, they are actually going to make a stretcher at this point so they can carry James, who was injured. Okay, James, you can quickly, if you can, get up. Because they have really bandaged you up somehow. Okay, wait a minute.
All right, so for you younger boys, that skit was actually not meant to be funny. Um, the skit was a real life, potentially a real life situation when any of us are going on a hike. So they use stuff that they had in their bag. What are some of the stuff that you saw them use in their bag? Like. Kurt. A sheet. So they had a sheet. Maybe they used that in, in their sleeping bag. What else? Uh huh. Rulers. Uh huh. What else? What was this that you all have? Neckerchiefs or handkerchiefs. Okay. So they made a splint. So he possibly had a broken leg, two broken legs, a broken arm. So they made splints so that he couldn't move. And then they made a stretcher out of what, instead of the poles that we would have if we were in the woods, what would we use? Sticks. Okay. Would we want a little bitty twig? No. no we'd want a kind of a, th a thick, he you knows, what? Woken stick. Yes, a walking stick. Yes, you would. A walking stick. So you would use your walking stick that you have and you would take whatever you had in your bag or your pack and you would make a stretcher like those guys did to get him out, okay, so that he could get seen by a doctor or whatever. So although the skit was kind of funny, but can that happen when they drop him? Yeah, it can happen. It's happened many times in all of the years that we've done scouts. We've done that skit several times, and sometimes they get dropped, okay? But guess what? You try it again, because what choice do you have to get him out of the woods? Is somebody going to carry him? Probably not, okay? So you back up and try it again and carry him out, okay? So thank you, guys. All right, the next group is the tiger group. All right, Walt. Okay. Sitting on an invisible bench. <laughs> yes. Can I join you? Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> can I? Can I sit too? What you doing? Can I join you? Yes. I moved the bench over there. Last but not least is the Wolf Den. Hi, Jackson. Why are you doing? What did you do today? Hi, Gavin, and what did you do today? I threw skills in the lake. Hi, Bo, what did you do today? I fed skittles to a snake. Hi, 
Hi, Matthew, what did you do today? I fed skaters to our boys and I fed Hi, Connor, what did you do today? Hi, Scout. What? I don't recognize you. What's your name? I'm Skittle. <laughs> Thank you all. All right, so now we're on to the advancement portion of our ceremony. A badge in Cub Scouting is a piece of embroidered cloth. It might not be worth a lot of money because the real value of the badge is in what it represents, the things that you learn to earn it. Tonight we have the privilege of watching our scouts take a step towards the next station in their Cub Scout trail. For each of these boys, this is just a stepping stone to their ultimate goal of to be an Eagle Scout. So before I start this, I, I forgot I'm supposed to say this. Um, the, boys, the boys already know this because I told them in the fellowship hall, but they will not be presented with their badges. We have certificates because all of their belt loops and all of their badges are lost in the mail somewhere. Um, council mailed them to me last week and I never received them. And I stalked the mail guy yesterday, and he did not have them. And so we will get the boys their badges, and we will get the boys their belt loops. Um, so instead, we have certificates. So I apologize. So will the following boys and their families please come forward? Sully O'Brien and Levi Ward. You can have the whole stage. Slide over. Okay, the line program is a fun way to give kindergartner boys um, the first introduction into the scouting program. Whether you know it or not, you guys have started building your foundation and by building character, learning citizenship, and developing personal fitness becoming effective leaders and have fun in the outdoors through all these hands-on activities. Um, as your den leader, Shelly Emmonson, presents you with the lion patch, may you always remember the fun you had learning to be a scout. I hope you all are very excited for all of the wonderful adventures ahead of you as you continue along the scouting trail. Now, as your ranks change, so does your uniform. You will now change from the gray pack t-shirt into the blue and gold of the Cub Scout uniform. So you all can take them back. Yeah, yeah, and then just bring them back in. All right, so while we pause for them to get changed, we're going to advance really quickly for the bobcat. Um, before any scout can advance in rank, and this starts from Tigers on, they must earn the bobcat badge, regardless of their age or when they started their scouting journey. Several of our scouts have completed this requirement. Will the following boys please come forward? Miles Pagnar, Leighton Duran, Gatlin Jenkins, Gavin Ward, Mason Cannon, Matthew Cannon, and Collins Clark Evans. To earn the Bobcat badge, these boys learn the Scout Oath, the Law, the Cub Scout Sign, Salute, Handshake, and Motto.
These things are part of the map that guides them along the scouting trail. As you are presented with your certificate, please remember the value of the badge and the scout, Cub Scout motto to always do your best. All right, give these guys a round of applause. You all can be seated. All right, as you wear your Cub Scout uniform for the first time, know that the orange of the neckerchief represents the beginning of the flame of scouting. An orange flame has, is not yet hot, but has just started and has huge potential. May you wear your uniform with pride as you begin your new role as a Tiger Scout. Pack 49, I would, like to I would like to present to you your new Tiger Den. All right, I want to say two, one more thing about both of these boys. So as a lion, it is not a requirement to earn the Bobcat badge. Okay, um, Kurt and Knox earned it last year as a lion, and um, but the other guys in the den did not, and that's okay. They don't have to earn it. However, when you move to Tigers, you have to earn the, the Bobcat badge prior to earning the Tiger badge. So both of these boys as, as lions have earned the Bobcat badge. So let's give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> Will the following boys and their families please come forward? Knox Braxton, Leighton Duran, Kurt Edmonston, Gatlin Jenkins, and Miles Packnar. You guys have worked hard and had fun spending your time doing adventures that move you ahead towards the Tiger rank. 
you have realized that by doing activities with your family, friends, and Cub Scout pack, you have felt a sense of being a part of a family, a community, and a country. As I present you with your Tiger badge, think of the fun and everything you learned as you complete the next step of your exciting Scout journey. Now as your rank changes, so do your colors. All right, guys, I want you all down on this bottom step, shoulder to shoulder, once everybody gets done. Slide in. Do in the middle. Get in the middle. No wiggles. The yellow in the neckerchief should remind you of happiness, good cheer, and the warm sunshine of the Scout Oath. The red represents the flame of scouting that burns bright within you. As you learn more scout skills, there will also be more expected of you as the flame continues to grow. To show you have the flame of scouting in your heart, make the Cub Scout sign. Make the Cub Scout sign. And repeat after me the Cub Scout motto. Do y'all remember? Do your best. Good job. All right, parents, you can be seated. Guys, you're going to stay up there. Hold on. Stand up. All right, pack 49, I would like to present to you your new wolf den. Y'all stay there so your parents can get pictures. All right, congratulations. Will the following boys and their families please come forward? Mason Cannon, Matthew Cannon, Noe Harrington, Jackson Knox, Connor Schultz, Bo Valentine, and Gavin Ward. All right, y'all come and get down the steps. Y'all space out so your parents can come, come all the way around, wrap around. There you go. As each of you worked hard towards completing the adventures for your wolf badge, you have had the opportunity to help at home, in your community, and learn about camping and the outdoors. You learn respect for your flag, duty to God, and how to run with the pack. As your den leader, Karen Harrington presents you with the wolf badge. Here, I'll do it since you have a kid. <laughs> Hold on, I lost my place. May you wear it with pride, sorry.
as your rank changes, so do your, does your colors. Guys, y'all step down one step and get shoulder to shoulder. Slide that way. Gavin, slide that way. Bo, slide that way so y'all are in the center. Slide, slide, slide. All right. As you start the trail of bear, you will wear the blue neckerchief. Just as a blue flame is very hot, the flame of scouting spirit burns hot within each of you. May you always be reminded of the truth, loyalty, and obedience the blue stands for. As you continue to grow into a leader, you will learn the importance of these traits. Please make the scout sign and repeat the scout oath. Do, your, do the oath on oh my. Good job. All right, parents, y'all stay up there. We'll let your parents scoot down so if they want to get pictures of you, they can. Hold your certificate up and smile. Smile, look out that way. Mom wants to see your face. All right, you all can be seated. Congratulations, guys. Oh, I'm supposed to say, I present the new bear den. Sorry. We got a lot of trade and neckerchiefs going on. It's okay. I've been there. This is our largest den. Will the following boys and their parents please come forward? Dawson Britt, Victor Carrillo, Junior Harrington, Ry Rylan Hurdle, Rook James, Mason Long, Dylan Moore, Patrick O'Brien, Damari Pierce, and Court Valentine. All right, y'all step down and spread out. Dawson, go all the way in this corner. Victor slot over. There you go. As you work towards your bear badge, you have found the challenges became more difficult with each step. You have continued to foster the essential skills of Cub Scouts, but the adventures have introduced you to new skills that will be useful during your Boy Scout years. 
As your DIN leader, Katie Schultz, presents each of you with the badge, think about the choices you will make in each of your lives. Now as your rank changes, so do your colors. Y'all step down to the bottom step. Try to get shoulder to shoulder. As you start the trail to Weeblows, you will wear the plaid neckerchief. The multicolors in your new neckerchief are more like fireworks than a flame. You are reaching the very top of the Cub Scout ranks and are exploding with skills, spirit, and energy. You now need to use your scout spirit to reach the heights of Cub Scouts and prepare to launch into the Boy Scout troop before you know it. As we blows, your mom will present you with the colors, which we don't have. They will be pinned to your left shoulder where you will add all of your adventure pins and they will be placed. This will demonstrate the strength of your scouting flame. Please form or make the Cub Scout sign and recite the Scout Law. Signs up. Oh A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Good job. Stay up there and let your parents sit down.
David's looking at all the counting the kids that he's getting up in the Boy Scouts. Um, pack 49, I would like to present to you the new We Blow One Den. Congratulations, you all may be seated. Okay, for our last um, rank advancement, last but not least, is the Weeblo One group. Will the following boys and their parents please come forward? Colin Clark Evans, Nathan Lynn, James Pay, Nate Roberts, Connor Spencer, and Liam Long. Y'all spread out. As each of you join the Weeblo Den, you face new challenges and choices working towards the Weeblo badge. Your Weeblo Den leader now approves the completion of your requirements. Achievements are in the form of adventure pins and not belt loops. As your DEN leader, Claudia Spencer, presents you with this badge, think about the value of the Weeblo badge and the changes that took place while you earned it. Oh, sorry, I forgot you had a kid. <laughs> now, as your rank changes, so does your uniform. You will now change from the blue and gold of the Cub Scout uniform into the tan and green of the Boy Scout uniform. So what's going to happen is, boys, you are going to file out with um, Adam, Mr. Adam and Mr. David, and they're going to make sure that you're dressed. Parents, you can have a seat because there is something special about coming, the boys coming in, being completely dressed and seeing them in that uniform for the first time with all kinds of smiles on their face. So we want you all to enjoy that moment. Okay, so that's going to take just a few minutes. So while that is taking place, I'm going to move on to some of the um, special activities um, and special act um, badges that we have or um, patches that we have to present. So the Outdoor Activity Award. I do actually have this patch. This patch looks like this. Um, I had ordered a whole bunch of extra, so that would be a good thing. The Outdoor Activity Award promotes activities in the outdoors like camping, outdoor events like hiking and games, and even outdoor related service projects. Along with these, each scout must complete a rank appropriate achievements or electives related to outdoor skills and learning. It can be earned during any rank in Cub Scouts. And the patch is worn on the right pocket flap. Tonight we honor a group of boys that have completed the requirements for this award. Will the following scouts please come forward and please don't bring your certificates. Okay, so leave your certificates at the, on your bench. Um, Knox Braxton, Leighton Duran, Kurt Edmonston, Gatlin Jenkins, and Miles Packnar. Hey, certificates on the bench.
All right, give these guys a round of applause. You all can be seated. Thank you. All right, two other groups. Um, I'm going to kind of split. I'll do one first because they're all here. Um, the Whittling Chip Award. We have already recognized all of these boys for earning the Whittling Chip. So you're just going to stand at your seat. You don't have to come up. You're just going to stand up, okay? Um, we would like to recognize all of these boys. It is the Bear Den. It actually is a, re a requirement for the Bear Den. Um, the program, the Whittling Chip program, teaches the boys about knife safety. The scouts have to learn and demonstrate how to use the knife as a tool, not a weapon, and recite the, from memory the pocket knife pledge. Most importantly, they, this earning this award grants the scouts permission to do what? Yes, use the pocket knife when you go camping. But only what? What, what, do, you you what do you have to have? Your whittling chip card, right? So you have to present that if somebody asks for it. So all of these boys had a lot of fun. They carved um, uh, something that they came up with out of soap. Um, they learned a lot of nice safety and, of course, that dang pocket knife pledge they had to memorize. So, would the following scouts please stand? Just stand where you are. Uh, Dawson Britt, uh, Victor, Junior Harrington, Rylan, Rook, Mason, Dylan, Patrick, Damari, and Court. Give these guys a round of applause. Okay, you can be seated. Another thing that these two different dens did is the cyber chip. Um, we're going to recognize the dens that did do this. This is a new program that teaches scouts about internet safety, cyberbullying, identity theft, and appropriate cell phone and social media use, which is huge. Uh, which Would the following scouts please stand to be recognized? Again, you don't have to come up. Just stand when I call your name. Mason Cannon, Matthew Cannon, Noe Harrington, Jackson, Knox, Connor, Bo, and Gavin. Give these guys a round of applause. Okay, you guys can be seated. So I will recognize the Weeblo One Den um, that also earned that when they come back. So that's about all I got. So I'll talk a little bit about Friends of Scouting while I'm trying to fill this time until they finish getting dressed. Cut. So... Everybody, or mostly everybody in this pack has been to Camp Charles. Um, that is the camp in Bailey. We actually are in charge of the fall family camp out. Or me, we, as in the pack, are in charge of the fall family camp out at Camp Charles. Camp Charles probably is, is one of my favorite camps. And so it needs a lot of work from time to time. That is one of the things that your Friends of Scouting donations go towards. Um, everybody always asks, does it come directly to our pack? Not directly, but in a, uh, kind of around the way, we still benefit from the Friends of Scouting money. Um, we have Cub Scout day camps that the kids are able to do. I know several are signed up for that this summer. Um, Terry Best is leading that, and it's going to be a great um, summer opportunity for these boys. So if you are interested in Cub Scout Day Camp, or if, if your child is interested, the only kids that have to have parents go are upcoming Tigers, which would be the two lines. Everybody else, it's drop off. You can sign your child up. It's a whole entire week, Monday through Friday. They do all kinds of wonderful stuff. David and I were volunteers at Cub Scout Day Camp probably for uh, six, seven years. Um, we were den leaders. They are still in their age groups, um, and they do all kinds of activities. They um, have guest speakers come in. 
based on the theme that they are doing. So Cub Scout Day Camp is a wonderful opportunity. Again, your friends of scouting money would go for that. Um, camp Body. Camp Body is a summer camp for the Boy Scouts. They also have co host Cub Scout events there as well. Um, that is another place that your Cub Scout money or Friends of Scouting money will go to help benefit. So there are a lot of things that we need that benefit scouting um, for us to continue to provide places to camp um, and quality programs for the boys. So if you haven't filled out your donation card, you do not have to turn any money in today. Um, you can be put on a payment plan, okay? So it's different options that you have. They will bill you. Um, so whatever you choose, any amount is helpful. Um, whether you can give $10 or $15 to, you know, $100. So please take time and consider giving to that because ultimately your scout will benefit in some way based on your contribution. We had 18 last year, if you all remember. So we're getting it down, getting it down, but it does take a little while, a little time. Okay, so they're evidently making their grant. Oh, whoops, I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> Look at these guys. As you wear this uniform for the first time, remember your new responsibility you hold and the leadership example you set for other scouts. Wearing this uniform gives you a sense of identification and commitment to great things to come. This is the next step in your journey to Eagle. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, they won't be here next year. This is it. They'll be moving up in February to go to the Boy Scout troop. So they won't be back for Blue and Gold next year. So give them another round of applause. <laughs> While they're standing up here, I will also recognize each of them for earning the Cyber Chip um, Award too. So give them a round of applause for that. Okay, you guys may be seated. You look sharp. That does take a little bit of time out of the ceremony, but it's so worth it. I love to see the faces when they um, come down. Okay, so the last area of recognition for our scouts is the Scout Spirit Award. Displaying scout spirit or living by the scout oath and law in their everyday life is part of the Boy Scout advancement process. So we choose to honor it in Cub Scouts as well. This award is given out every year to a deserving scout in each den that the leader feels demonstrates and exemplifies the 12 points of the scout law, which are what? Okay. 
Okay, good. So, will the following scouts please come forward? For the lion den, Levi Ward. Just come stand right here. The tiger den is Knox Braxton. The wolf den, Mason Cannon. The bear den, Damari Pierce. The Weeblow Den, Colin Clark Evans. And the overall pack is Matthew Cannon. This is an honor to be in s selected, and we encourage all the scouts to always strive to be their best self daily, following the Cub Scout motto, do your best. So let's give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. You may be seated. All right, I'm going to take just a few minutes to honor our den chief. So what is a den chief? A den chief is a Boy Scout that comes back to Cub Scouts, um, either by choice or by not choice, um, and helps out in the dens. We have three, um, I think only two of which are here, but we have three den chiefs that I would like to recognize. Um, Walt Moore, Nathan Spencer, you can come forward. Yes, you have to come on stage. And Chase Anderson is our other one. Um, he's not here tonight. So these guys come back, probably not always of their own free will, um, to help out their leaders. Walt has been helping me in our tiger den. Um, Nathan helps his mom in the Weeblo den, and Chase did as well, correct? Okay, so these guys again come back, they share their knowledge and experience with the younger kids. It also allows the younger kids to see that yes, you still can be cool and still be in scouts, um, that these guys do give back to those who came before them. Um, all three of my boys in some capacity over the years of scouting have been den chiefs, um, and so they have passed the token to other, other kids. Um, Walt in Boy Scouts is the knot guru. Okay, So you ask Nalt, Walt pretty much how to tie any knot, and Walt can do it. Okay, um, Nathan is a patrol leader. Walt is an assistant patrol leader. We always joked um, Carter my youngest son is was a or is a patrol leader along with Nathan and one of the best decisions Carter ever made was choosing Walt as his um, assistant Carter has um, very minimal organizational skills um, Walt has a whole lot okay so he did choose somebody that um, is the opposite of her, his personality which is fantastic so just give these guys a round of applause <laughs> So I don't have much, but I do have a token of our appreciation for you. Sorry, I didn't open them ahead of time. All right, so everybody can use the Amazon gift card, huh? Thank you. All right, thank you guys very much.
Okay, this, other than the advancement, this is probably one of my most favorite times of the, the ceremony. Um, we're going to recognize our den leaders. Some years I can make it without crying, some years I do cry, so if I cry, I apologize. Uh, will the following leaders please come forward? Shelly Edmondson, Karen Harrington, Katie Schultz, Claudia Spencer, Dennis Pay, and Adam Schultz. Did I get everybody? All right, so you know I have to talk for a few minutes and then you'll get your prize. <laughs> Den leaders are an indispensable part of our pack. Without each of them, we would not be a successful scouting program that we are today. These men and women are all volunteers. They give your children a very special gift. They give them the gift of their time. They give of their time when attending training, planning your son's den meeting, working on den projects, planning and organizing activities, camping trips, and banquets such as the one that you are enjoying tonight. The only payment they receive is your thank you and by seeing the look of pride on your son's faces as they successfully complete an accomplished goal. For many, these leaders will never know the impact they have made on these boys' lives, but they still carry on. Why? Because they're glutton for punishment. Mm. Because they are not busy enough in their own lives. I'm sure that's exactly it. Because they have nothing else better to do. Mm. No, of course not. Each, I'm sure each of them have their own reasons, but it is probably, ha it has something to, to do with the fact that they believe in the scouting program and what it teaches. They want to give back to their community. They want to help shape and mold these young boys in the crazy world we live in. And they want to get, give back like it was given to them. Everyone has their own story, but I can tell you from my experience, scouting is not easy. Would you all agree? And I know you're definitely going to agree with the next part. It takes more time than any of you all can ever imagine. But the sense of pride they get when they see the smiles on the kids' faces or the look at how much the kids have grown as they advance through the ranks in the troop with their deep voices and cheesy mustaches. And hopefully one day we can all stand proud and watch these boys that we're looking at right now be pinned as Eagle Scouts in the troop. Take the time to really thank each of these men and women that work hard to make a difference and help each of your children learn what it means to follow the Scout Law. So, let's give them a round of applause. Okay, so I have prizes for each of you. Shelly, you have brought new ideas and an excitement to the pack that is refreshing and has been a joy to watch. You are a great asset, so you receive the Gummy Bear Award because we are very glad that you have joined our pack. Karen, I know you were a little, little hesitant about being a leader and didn't think you could do it, but we all knew you could. So you get the Lifesaver Award because you truly are a lifesaver. <laughs> lifesaver. Okay, who's next? Dennis. Being an Eagle Scout and familiar with scouting, you helped Claudia with the hands-on requirements in your den. You helped out whenever you were asked, and of course, you were always willing to bless our meals. 
You get the popcorn award for being, bringing a little pop into our pack. <laughs> All right, Claudia. You have been by my side for so many years. <laughs> Our families have made so many memories together all because of scouting. Our boys are best friends and I hopefully will get pinned as Eagle Scouts together. I don't know what I have, would have done without you. You will be missed when you leave the pack in February as Connor crosses over, but never forget how much you mean to me. I give you the Mint Award because you mean a mint to me and to this pack. <laughs> Katie, what can I say? You became a leader just by the sheer fact that you and I were best friends. And you had two boys, of course. I never really asked. It was just kind of assumed. For you, I give you the M&M Award. You are not only magnificent, and you, you are not only a magnificent and marvelous friend, but a den leader as well. Adam, since David and I suckered Katie into scouts, Adam and I came, al Adam came along as part of a package deal. Adam helped out in Weeblow ones and twos, finished the year with Katie in the bear den. I could also not do Scout Sunday without him and his musical talents. You get the Twizzler Award, and you got more Twizzlers than you're ever going to eat. <laughs> because you are always flexible to do whatever we need you to do to help out with the pack. There's no way that I could do what I do by myself, okay? Um, I couldn't do this pack, I couldn't run this pack without this group of leaders. They do give their time and talents. Um, not everybody is meant to be a den leader. Not everybody wants to be a den leader, okay? Some don't want to do it and still get asked, okay? Um, but they all do a really great job and they're all um, helping work with your boys. Um, so give them another round of applause. Okay, we have gotten to the place where we kind of just take over the mic at this point, so no shock there. So this is a little something, because you're kind of semi-retiring, am I right? Yeah. We'll call it semi-retirement. I don't really know what retirement is, I'm not there yet, um, but if this was with the state, I mean, it would probably be, you wouldn't be retiring with full benefits at this point, <laughs> but anyway. This is just a little something because I guess it's a crown of jewels. Thank you. It's legal though. <laughs> All right. So, everyone has a talent, something to offer the pack. Not everyone is meant to be a den leader, so parent volunteers are essential to make this pack work. We depend heavily on you all to pick up and lend a helping hand. There are three parents who consistently provided the pack extra help. Either as den helpers or making sure our bellies are full, these parents jumped in to make sure that we always had what we needed. Will the following parents please come forward to be recognized? Melissa Cannon, 
Shane Braxton, and Emily Britt. Okay, y'all get awards too, so just kind of hold on. Okay, Melissa. Your boys were new to scouting, and I'm sure, like many volunteers, you didn't know what you were getting yourself into. But you were an amazing help to Karen in the Wolf Den. You get the zoo award, because it would have been a zoo without your help. Shane, you've helped me in so many ways over the last two years from Knox's time in Lions and Tigers. I could always count on you. If I needed another adult buddy to go on a hike or for you to share your knowledge about trees with the kids, to put a birdhouse together or bird feeders, you were always there. You did whatever I asked and didn't mind helping keep the boys in line either. You get the Cracker Jack Award for always being the prize to the den and this scouting program. All right, Emily. You were the first to sign up for any committees and you made sure that every event went off without a hitch. Your creative talents are evident in your centerpieces and your organizational skills are noted with every meal served. You get the Skittles Award for bringing a rainbow of colorful and creative ideas to this pack. All right, so let's give these guys a round of applause. So as we prepare to conclude our blue and gold banquet, I want to remind you that Ted is going to be in the back for your Friends of Scouting cards. Please um, feel free to leave that card with him. Um, and don't forget your pins too, because he needs his pins back. Um, I want to thank each of you all for being in our Cub Scout group, for all your help that you have given us throughout this year. Um, next year is going to be a bit of a transition um, as I will take a step back. Um, next year, my role I see more as a parent coordinator. Um, we are going to get these parent committees up and whoops. We are going to get these parent committees up and going. Um, so over the summer, please take time and prayerfully consider how you can help the Cub Scout pack. Um, we will have a list of committees, and you all are going to sign up for some committees to be on. Um, if you are feel led to be a DEN leader, um, please let me know that as well. We are um, needing some help in some of our DENs. Um, so not everybody, like I said, is meant to be a leader, but there are some people behind the scenes that um, have to, things have to happen behind the scenes to make this Cub Scout pack work. Um, and with me stepping down, a lot of that has to um, continue to happen through you all um, because the leader's responsibility is that. It is to come and to provide a quality program to your children twice a month. And then we need to figure out how we're going to get the rest of it done um, through parent volunteers and committees and all kinds of um, organization. So that's where I see my role next year. Um, so I want you to come back with some excitement and be ready to go in the end of August, the beginning of September. We will have some summer activities. Please stay tuned to the Remind. I will be sending out um, activities that we will be doing um, and the dates 
If you can come, fantastic. If you can't come due to vacation, that's totally understandable. We want you to enjoy your summer, but we do want to provide something for the kids to do over the summer. If you know any kids that are interested either in your kid, child's class or in other classes um, that are interested in Cub Scouts, please let them know. Um, we are accepting kindergartners, that's a big word, kindergartners, through um, fifth graders. So. Um, if you have a, you know a child that is a, an upcoming kindergartner, please send them my way. You can feel free to give me, give um, them my cell phone number or email, and they can contact me because they can start doing the summer activities um, starting in June. So we would love to have some of our dens are getting a little small, and so we would love to have more boys join. So if you know of any that are interested, please send them my way. Um, thank you very much. We will see you all in September. Everybody drive safe. Thank you. Congratulations, guys.